set on the dailies because now I would like to go through the dailies and see what stories are making rounds on the dailies. Now looking at the dailies, the first story of course uh, on the main page is NUP man claims torture by Amin. I will go through that story on page 8. He claims he was beaten while in detention. We'll go through a little bit of his story as he was kidnapped. And then the other picture that made the day is exams start as many candidates drop out for so many reasons. And there's a story on the fact that the girl child has registered too many pregnancy cases as we continue with what is happening in the UCE examinations that are being sat in the dis different districts. Now we saw the story on Kasese whereby the the, the, the headmasters and headmistresses picked the uh, papers in the police station because it needed to be safeguarded. But their complaints is the same. They're not sure the students are ready for these examinations. However, the students are showing readiness and the girl child is excited about going back to school. They say child marriage was going to be their only solace if they had not gone back to school. So they thank the Minister of Education for starting school as early and as quick as this. Now, from the archives, when we look at what is happening, there's a picture of Gaddafi donned in his cultural attire and His Excellency Yori Kogutum 70 donned in his suit. And they're walking together with a sly smile on the president's face. And the Libyan leader, Muammar Gaddafi, was welcoming President Yori Kogutum 70 to Libya. And that was on January 15th, 2002, Muammar Gaddafi was killed. And we remember that Libya was at peace. But now Libya is not at peace. So the other question that we asked with those of someone, Chris Makanga, on the dictatorship versus democracy, what stands? And where is it that democracy is better than dictatorship? And where is it that dictatorship is better than democracy? And then we also see that a government of Uganda blocks jobs for Ugandans. We see that the government has stopped the U.S. Embassy in Kampala from giving uh, jobs to its Ugandan employees until Uganda approves the vaccine. We know that when you work for the U.S. Embassy, as they're vaccinating their workers, they also vaccinate Ugandan workers working in the U.S. Embassy. But the government has said, stop, Mulindeko, wait a minute until we're ready for this. And then today in history, we see Obote promotes Oyit Ojok Lutwa. And that happened on March 2nd, 1983. Know your history, know your country. And that is the first thing that you need to understand as you fight for your rights, as you fight for the rights of your country. As you say, I want peace, I want change, I want democracy. Do you know the history? of your country. Also, on the same day, that is around 1980s, the first horses arrive in Uganda. And we know till now we have horses nearby. In the resort, you can go and ride a horse for just, what, 20,000 Ugandan shillings. So go get the experience and don't be like the person who was there before 1980 and didn't know how to ride a horse. It is a scary experience. I have been there. It's a very scary experience. But hey, you need to learn how to try things, no matter how scary they are. And then the other news uh, that is here is old traffic fines to move to new traffic permits. Now, for those who thought that since first technology is against it, and we have the new uh, a group that is dealing with the driving permits and they have come in, that means that all my old cases, all the fines that I had to pay are going to go. I am sorry to tell you that it is not going to happen like that, gentlemen. The cases that you had in the old permits are going to be taken to the new permits. And here's the other news. Now, the aggravated crimes that you perform while driving, knocking people and running away, I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's going to be registered on your new permits. And that only means that you will, they will take your permit for five years. Now, say you knock someone. You are driving at a high speed, you knock someone, you run away, you don't take responsibility. When they find that out, they will pull out your driving permit and hold it for five whole years and give it back to you after five years. That means you won't be driving for five years at the end of the day. So that is the conversation that is going on. And they're saying that do not think 
whatsoever that your driver's lances, the new driver's lances, will be unique and new and different from the crimes you committed on the old one. Now, if you want more details, please find yourself a copy and you ought to read it because you need to understand what is going to happen in the new driving permit. Now, we also see that police has arrested eight suspects over killing an SFC soldier, and that happened in Nakaseke district and also the greater Luero, where there are people who are arrested. Eight of them have been arrested, including a woman for killing a police officer and 10 other people. And then they took the gun and kept going on and rapidly killing people. Those were arrested and more are being looked for. Pregnant woman knocked dead on his own her way to give birth, a very sad one, and that happened in Bale. A 27-year-old pregnant woman died on sport on a road accident on her way to Mbale Regional Referral Hospital. Now, moving forward with what else is trending in the news, exams start, but several candidates miss out. I remember telling you that particular update as soon as I opened the papers. Now, exams have started, but several candidates have missed out. Why is the question you're asking? Now, it's because that parents have failed to pay the examination fees and they've also failed to pay the tuition. Now, that is the situation that the country is facing at this time. Students have failed to sit for their exams, and according to reports here, out of the 687 registered candidates, 345 will do their first practical exams. UNEB uh, gave the materials in time, according to the students in the different um, um, districts and the headmasters, and they say that hundreds of students across the country have started their education. However, some of these schools that are trying to adjust to the new SOPs and the new COVID-19 guidelines, and one of them is that they need to report the cases by 3 p.m. on a daily on 6767. However, most parents have failed to pay the fee and a lot of students have failed to attend school. Now, we also know that the ministry has blocked 23 billion Ugandan shillings for home study materials. Here was the plan for the Ministry of Education. The plan was that when these students, semi-candidates, go back to school, teachers should make sure that they do not overload students with books. They do not over put up the curriculum, they do not over teach. And they say the reason why that will happen is because on the platform of Ministry of Education, there will be lessons for the students who will go back home and of course keep reading. And also there will be you know, online platforms with questions, assessments and lessons for the students to take while they're not in school. So they ask for these particular teachers not to overload the students with school materials or educational uh, books. Now, moving forward, we also see that uh, <laughs> there's a good story of a mother of four sits S4 examinations. That's, that's, that's a very um, good one. And then girls fall to a pandemic. And the pandemic they're talking about is pregnancies as schools reopen. A lot of them are here, and they've failed to go back to school, and they've failed to study, and it's because they got pregnant. Excuse me. <coughs> um, excuse me for that. Let's move forward with the stories that we have that are taking over the news. Of course, the girls pregnant and the fact that some of them have been allowed to go to school and some of them are unable to do so because they're almost giving birth or they already have kids who are breastfeeding and it's going to be hard for them. However, you never say they're adding 45 minutes for them to continue with their examinations even after the others are finished. Now, when we look at the numbers here, data from Kitgum Diocese indicates that 3,430 teenage girls between 14 and 16 years got pregnant between March and October 2020, and of these, 780 are from Kitgum District, 1,000 from Lamore District, and 730 from Agago, 920 from Pader. We also see that there were other numbers in Kawale where the senior probation and social welfare officer talked about 1,014 teenage um, girls who got pregnant and they were recorded at different health centers in the district between January and September. And the child mothers, unfortunately, are aged between 15 and 19 years old. Now, this looks like a vice 
that we parents are going to have to fight by ourselves. Nobody will help us fight this war of teenage pregnancy, unfortunately. And there are very many indications of the different districts that have registered very many numbers of pregnant girls during this season of the lockdown because there were early marriages, teenage marriages, there was rape, and since they were at home with their uncles and relatives, some of them took advantage of the fact that these girls stayed home. Now, moving forward, we have the story of the NUP man who claims that he was being tortured in the military cells. His name is Cyrus Samwa Kasato. Now, Cyrus Samwa Kasato says on February 8th, at around half past midday, he was in a meeting at Womwea School in Chevando, and the parish chief had convened the meeting for all the parish chairpersons to listen to the guidance from the non-government organization on how to handle marriage and family-related affairs. And he says there is when they abducted him, and he says when he was abducted, he was tortured, he was beaten, and he did not have what to eat when he was in abduction. Now all the stories are coming out and the police has said that they have given the list of people missing to the internal affairs minister, Jeje Odong, and they says now when he says that he doesn't have that information, then he won't be telling the truth to the public and they promise that the list will be out soon. Robert Chagulanyi released his own list of over 234 people who are still missing. Now, Electoral Commission admits error in poll results declaration forms. The Electoral Commission yesterday admitted that there was an error in the presidential declaration forms it posted to debunk fake results on social media. Now, the results for a young polling station in Navy District indicated that presidential candidate Patrick Oboy Amuriat got six votes. Joseph Kabuleta, uh, Willie Mayambala and Nobat Mao each got no vote, and Nancy Kalembe and John Katumba each had one, while Robert Chagulani had eight. Now, the report also says that Mugisha, Greg Muntu, and Mr. Fred Mesigua each scored four votes, and Tumkunde Henry had two, while Yurik Okutam had 198. Now, the form indicates that the total number of valid votes cast for candidates were 300, yet when the votes were tallied, they added up to 224. On its Twitter handle, Uganda Electoral Commission said they asked the public to disregard the information refer referring to its doctored um, results, and they said and admitted that this particular um, the declaration form was errored. Mm -hmm. I I've never had Electoral Commission come up to accept anything in any way and I'm glad that they can now one time or the other come up to say well I'm guilty for the crimes I committed that way maybe the country can have reconciliation and we can move forward now moving forward there's a very interesting story that I was also looking at and I saw it and that is the ex-French president Sarkozy jailed over graft and the charges carried is a maximum of 10 years and a fine of 1 million euros now the case is that he was charged against bribing someone he was charged against bribing them for giving him security information and saying that he would give them money now the charge is that Sarkozy will not be going to jail however he will be held under house arrest learn what is happening in the news we also see that Bobby asks court to block your bid to recall his car. Now, this story has been setting the talk in town with everybody talking about Bobby Wine's new car that costed him a lot of money. And according to Bobby Wine, his people, the group of his supporters abroad in the diaspora, are the ones who put money together and bought him this particular car. However, URA has asked Bobby to bring back that car so that they can investigate how it got into the country and if tax has been levied on it. However, Bobby's argument is that much as it is true that they have the power under Section 236D of the East African Custom Management Act to examine goods, they do not have automatic powers to re-examine the goods. Now, Bobby Wine says, the car was in your custody and it was examined and assessed and taxed. The tax was fully, fully paid and the goods was released 
to the taxpayer. So how come you're telling me to bring back the car? I am not bringing it back. And he's asking court to help him with that. Now, court also sets Thursday to dispose of Chagulanyi petition. Court has finally set the debt to dispose of this particular petition and Mayambara will be taking it over. Now, take notice that the hearing of this application has been fixed for March 4th, 2021 at 9.30 a.m. Now, STV will be bringing you this information every other time that it is updated. Now, moving forward to what is happening, Busia NUP supporters flee for fear of arrest. A number of them are saying that they are still facing arrest and they are still facing abduction and most of them are scared for their lives. One of the reasons that Robert Chagulanyi put forward for pulling out the petition is that his supporters or his, his um, witnesses were being tackled, they were being arrested, they were being intimidated by the government and that's one of the reasons for pulling out the petition. And then we see that Bunambute teachers protest over non-payment of salaries and they said if the salaries are not paid they're going to stop teaching and they will not go to school. Now the, the, the topic of money when it comes to education opening up, the topic of money when it comes to teachers being in class, the topic of money when it comes to sitting students 1.2 to 2 meters away from each other, the topic of money when it comes to masks is a very complex one. And the government and the Ministry of Education need to sit and think and rethink over it to look for a plan to deal with this issue or else there's going to be problems. We see that on page 13, Bugiri women benefit from a 2.6 billion fish farming project. Women empowerment, speaking of that, and we also see that on the picture of the day, Stella Nyanzi keeps hurling insults at NUP on her Facebook account. And Facebook NUP supporters have told Stella Nyanzi, you need to stop insulting on NUP or we will come for you. And we know how NUP supporters are passionate about their party. But Stella Nyanzi said, oh, why? There are gay people in NUP and I know them one by one. And NUP is being funded by gay or the LGBT community. And, you know, NUP has denied these allegations time and time and time again. But, you know, investigation needs to be done. Now, moving forward with what is happening, you have a pullout of Prosper, where the first story is NSSF law. What is in store for servers? We know that NSSF is important, and they gave us permission to have mid-term allowances to our money, and that means that you can have your money at the age of 45, 46, and that is a very good call given that the COVID-19 situation hit a number of us. And we also have, of course, for those who love doing puzzles like me, you have that section where you can take your time and sit there. And moving forward, we see the Trump hints at third run for president. Now, 46% vote last week. One U.S. poll suggested that 46% of surveyed Trump voters would vote for him if he uh, came back uh, and if he left the Republicans and started his own party. Trump seems to be more popular than we, we, we hoped that he would be, but he's still popular. And his supporters... Uh, 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 really supportive of him and any move that he makes. Anyways, that's the U.S. politics. Now, coming back to sports, Onyango's ankle problem worries sundowns and cranes as we're going into the matches. Now, Group B, according to the results, the Belowders uh, had one over five with the sundowns, and Group C, Waded Kasa, had four over zero with Kaiser Chiefs. However, Onyango's ankle problem is also worrying me. How are we supposed to have our goalkeeper having ankle problems? Any agenda to Yamba, you know? So let's pray for him and hope that he gets better. And finally, Netball Chief Anek must leave in June. All those stories and more in your dailies. Now, that is daily one. Let's go to daily two. Now, in our dailies, number two. Police crush deadly gang and recover guns. Of course, we spoke about that story in the same daily that I was reading. And 10 people were murdered. One of them was an F SFC soldier. And there were 40 robberies that happened. We know in Entebbe, a woman who was attacked and killed. And there was a young child, a minor, who saw the incident. And he reported it to police and said three people with a gun shot down the woman. They first told her, open up your, your door or we'll kill you. 
She opened up her door, and while she was trying to run, they shot her on her way away from them, and the child reported, but he said that he was unable to see their faces. Very sad indeed. Export earnings rise to 1.5 trillion, and it means that our economy is recovering from the COVID-19 meltdown. Now, when we go to the first story, her hustle is about a woman who makes a charcoal stalls, and that was that is Mili Iziwa and Rosemary Chengonza who earn a living from making charcoal stoves. Her hustle, your hustle, my hustle. Let us progress our hustles and see that we are dependent, we are independent women and not dependent. And then know your member of parliament. Today you have Boniface Okot, uh, youth member of parliament in northern Uganda. You have Maneno Zumura, a woman MP, Obongi district. And then you have Biarugava Alex from Isingiro South. And today in history, March 12, 1966, the Kabaka, Sir Edward Mutesa I, said his government would always recognize the independence of the judiciary and support the principle of judicial impartiality. COVID-19 cases in Uganda, we have 40,367 not rising. We have 334 deaths not rising. We have 14,989 recoveries. And the new recoveries are at 323. So we have more recoveries and less cases being registered. Now, another story is that Museveni summons all police commanders. The meeting is expected to discuss issues relating to the welfare of officers, promotions, medical care, accommodations, among others. And now, Chagulani was promising them one million, but there's a meeting to talk about their welfare. Now, moving forward, we have police bust gang linked to 10 murder robberies, and that is on page four. You can get the details right here and the names of the people and where exactly they committed these murders. Chagulani petition hearing set for Thursday. Now, this has more details than the first uh, daily, and it talks about, of course, Chagulani's claims, Mayambala's appeal, what the lawyers say, the Presidential Election Act for you who wants to understand what Section 63, uh, Clause 3rd of the Presidential Election Act says in giving leeway to any interested party to take over the presidential election petition. <clears throat> We also see Forum for Democratic Change sets debt for delegates conference. Excuse me one more time. <coughs> <coughs> I am trying to figure out what is happening with this cough that I'm having this morning. Of course, it's not COVID-19. I tested and I'm negative. Moving forward, political parties to set agenda for national dialogue from Lumumba. Now, the iPod Summit will be held at Kololo Independence Grounds to discuss a number of things, and one of them is the party's set agenda for national dialogue. Now, moving forward, vaccination training is underway in the different uh, um, hospitals and clinics. They're training the doctors and patients on how to give them COVID vaccine. And we know that the COVID vaccines arrive this week. Now, Dr. Jen Ruth Cheng says, we're doing micro planning to ensure that the moment the vaccines arrive, we deploy them. Now, more on this and more will be going through them. And of course, we'll have to come back and finish what is happening